In this video, we're going to take a look at the Pro EQ within Studio One 3.5. Studio One's Pro EQ is a seven band parametric equalizer that will allow you to really scope your sound while also providing a display to see visually what your adjustments are doing to your signal via the different spectrum modes. And this, this display will also show you the curves for each band and resulting EQ curve that's being applied to your complete signal. And we're going to see what this looks like uh, in just a second here. Now, if you're watching this tutorial, I'm assuming that you're fairly new to Studio One and the Pro EQ. So really quickly, let's take a look on how we can actually access the Pro EQ. And if I press F7 on my keyboard, I'm taken to the effects page and we've got our personas folder here. If we click on the arrow to expand that out, these are listed alphabetically. I can then come to the Pro EQ here at the bottom. We can actually drag this onto the track that we'd like to use it on. We can even select from these different presets by opening up the folders down below. I'm going to F7 and close that back out and press F4 to open up the inspector for this track. Just to show you that we can also access the Pro EQ by coming to the inserts in the inspector for this track, clicking on the plus symbol. These again will be listed in alphabetical order. Then moving down, we see the Pro EQ here. I'll click on that and we're in business there. So just know that uh, parametric EQ is going to allow you to control three aspects of frequency, uh, your level cut boost, the center or primary frequency and the bandwidth of each frequency. And this is going to be different than say a graphic EQ, which we can see here. And this has sliders that are only going to allow you to adjust specific fixed frequencies with no control of the bandwidth or primary frequency. So let's just dive right in and take a look at some of the parameters and features of the Pro EQ. At the very top here, we've got power to activate or deactivate the device. We've got bypass. We've got an area for storing and accessing our presets. So if we've made any adjustments down below and we'd like to save that in a, for use in a future song or projects, we can then save that here and then access it here within that new uh, track. We next have an area for accessing some presets that come along with Studio One, and we took a look at those when we were in the browser a second ago. We then have an area for working with automation, which is a bit beyond the scope of this video, but if you'd like to learn more about automation, I'll put a little link here that you can click on to find out more. We have compare, copy, paste. We can actually copy any tweaks or settings that we've made here, come to a second instance of Pro EQ in our song, and then paste those settings within that second instance. Next, we have a side chain, which we can click to activate. And this is going to allow us to compare the frequencies of two different sources. So if we have a second audio file or second track that we'd like to compare the frequencies of that track to the one that we're working on, we can do that by activating as we just saw here. And what I've got below here, these are both the same track. So if I go ahead and play back, This bottom one does have the higher frequencies cut out. The first one, we can see that those higher frequencies are still in. So let's compare these two and see what the cut actually looks like visually within the Pro EQ. And what we would need to do is, let's get these right. I will... Um, F3 and open up the console. Let's come to our second track with the filters that have been cut off in that higher range. We'll open up the side panel. And in the sends section, we're going to come to side chains. Let's, this is the side chain that is going to show up once you click that activate button. We'll choose that. I'm going to close that back down. F3 to close out the console. Let's select this top one. And open up that Pro EQ and let's play back. And we can see here, this is the second instance where those upper frequencies have been cut out and we have a visual representation of what's going on with these two different tracks. And I'll go ahead and disable, stop playback, 
Let's go ahead and get this second one muted and come back to our Pro EQ. I'll F4 and close out the inspector. Moving on, we've got show curve and by default, this is gonna be on current. So if I were to click and hold and drag a frequency handle and make an adjustment there, I'll adjust this and cut. Uh, let's raise up here. Then basically whenever I hover on a frequency handle, we're gonna see the color of that curve, the adjustments that we've been making. If I were to go ahead and select all, then you can see we're gonna see the curve color for all of the parameters that we've been making adjustments. And along with this white line, which is gonna show the overall curve for the adjustments that we've made to all three. Now I'm just gonna come back to current, and then we can see as I hover, we're only gonna see one at a time. And I'm gonna reset these back to their default position. And we can do that by con holding control. I'll click on the gain and return those back. Next we have spectrum, and this is gonna allow us to choose from three different spectrums that will display our output signal metering. And the three options that we have are third octave, which is going to be on by default, FFT curve and waterfall. We also have the option to choose none. So leaving this on third octave, if I go ahead and play back, we can see what that looks like. FFT curve and waterfall. And I'll go ahead and set this back to third octave. And just note that our spectrum display has a range of 20 hertz here at the left, all the way up to 20 kilohertz. And then also here vertically on the left, we have a range from minus 24 dB to 24 dB. And actually, if we just would like to make use of this display here, we can click on this arrow here and hide the various controls below like so. And I'll just click that arrow again to bring those back. And finally, at the top here, we have high quality. This is gonna be engaged by default, and this setting will use more processing power when it's activated, but it will provide you more accurate equalization. And if you're trying to conserve on CPU for any reason, you can just simply click to disengage that. Now moving on to the bottom, let's take a look at the controls available here. And now as mentioned, Pro EQ is a seven band parametric EQ, so the seven bands below here kind of move from left to right, starting with our low cut here in the bottom left corner. Then we have low frequency, low mid frequency, mid frequency, high mid frequency, high frequency, and our high cut. Each of these seven bands does have a power for activating and deactivating. When it's inactive, its uh, corresponding frequency handle will have a open center. And then once we go ahead and activate, that center will fill in. So which one were we? So here we can see that that's filled in once we activate. Now the parameters are gonna vary slightly depending on which band that we're working with. So the low cut and high cut are going to have exactly the same controls. We're gonna have a frequency and adjustable slopes here. So if I go ahead and activate the low cut, then we can see we're cutting the low frequencies starting at about 75 hertz. We can then adjust the frequency and move this up and cut even the higher frequencies out, moving all the way up to 20 kilohertz. If I come back down, now we can adjust the slope here. By default, it's on 12 dB per octave. We can take that down to be a more gradual slope by choosing 6 dB we can come all the way up to 48 dB, which is gonna be a more extreme cut of our frequencies. I'm gonna go ahead and set that back to 12 and deactivate that. Our high cut is going to allow us to make the same adjustments. Moving on, we have our low frequency and high frequency. Again, these two will have the exact same controls. We've got a Q parameter, we've got our gain for cutting or boosting, and then we've got our frequency, which is going to be the main frequency that we're fro focusing our adjustments on. Now the low frequency and high frequency also have a filter mode that we can choose here. And if I click here, we can see that we can choose between peaking or several different types of shelves. By default, the low frequency is gonna be on peaking. So if I were to adjust the gain and raise that up, we can see how that behaves if I cut. Now, if I were to change this to a shelf, then we can see 
that that's going to then behave more like a low cut filter. And we can then adjust the frequency there. If I were to take the shelf all the way down to 24 dB, then we can see how that behaves. It's gonna be a more drastic cut at our chosen frequency. I'm gonna take that back to peaking and I'm gonna control click to set the gain back. And then the high frequency is basically going to have the exact same controls. It's going to be on shelf by default, but we can also choose peaking here, increase or cut, alter the frequency that we're focusing on and adjust the Q, which is gonna determine the bandwidth that we're actually affecting with our cut or boost. And we can just click and drag the pot. We can also use our mouse wheel to make finer adjustments. And if we come to the frequency handle, we can actually use our mouse wheel to make adjustments here as well. And we can also click on the display below and manually enter in a value here. And I'm gonna go ahead and control click to return these back to their default positions and move on to our final three bands, which are mid frequency, low mid frequency, mid frequency, and high mid frequency. These each have parameters for Q, gain, and the frequency that we're going to be focusing on. And we've seen how these work. So if I come to the mid frequency, we can boost or cut, adjust the Q. We can get really surgical with our adjustments that we're making and we can adjust the frequency that we're focusing on here. I'm gonna go ahead and deactivate. And so finishing up in the bottom right-hand corner here, we have gain and auto. So gain is obvious, that's gonna control our gain. Now the auto, auto, which is gonna be disengaged by default, we can click to turn that on. And as you can see, the gain is no longer available for manual adjustments. And this is because the audio is going to adjust the output signal to match the original incoming signal. And this essentially means that it's gonna guarantee if you have a signal coming in at zero dB, it's going to be sent out at zero dB. And I'm gonna go ahead and just check that to disengaged. And now we can then manually adjust our gain. And so these are the different parameters and features that are available within the Pro EQ. This wasn't meant to be a video on how to EQ in your mixes, but basically just to show you what's available within the Pro EQ and uh, how you can go about making adjustments.